guys, and welcome to this week's episode of MLA TV. Now, before I tell you what's coming up in this week's show, we'll be jumping straight into the MLA news with Chris. Now, hopefully, this week he's remembered to get fully dressed. Welcome to MLA News. I assure you, this week I am actually wearing trousers. But on with the news. First off, we want to thank you for sending in your clapping clips for the NHS and key workers across the country working hard for us during this difficult time. We really enjoyed the clips we've got so far. We made a little clip of our own with them. Check this out. Absolutely great. We loved having these clips in, but we don't want to stop there. We want more. We want more people from across Wenlock to film their clapping around their streets, their neighbourhoods, their cul-de-sacs. We want more from around Wenlock. We want to make a Wenlock dedicated video. We want to show the rest of the country how we roll. But we don't want to stop there either. We want people from across the country to send their clips into us so we can share them with as many people as we can. But that does involve a little teamwork. We want you to like and share our MA TV videos as far and as wide as you can so we can share all this kind of stuff with as many people across the country and the world as we can. So we do need your help. But, on to more news. The History Vlog will finally be out this Saturday. I filmed it before the lockdown and I've got the history intact and ready to go and the video will be released this Saturday. It will be released Saturday afternoon, so keep your hats on and keep your eyes peeled because I will be launching it then. But, I do want to talk to you briefly about m and Paranormal's social groups. Okay, we have two groups that we've made. Uh, the first of which is called m and Paranormal and Friends. Now this is just more of a social group between Paranormal teams and Paranormal fans and anyone in between to get together, share their posts and have a laugh and generally just connect. It currently stands at 156 followers, but we do want to increase that. So we do want you to be liking and sharing that as well. Invite your friends, get your friends to invite their friends. We want to increase the group. We want to have more fun, more interaction and more connections across the globe. Now, speaking of the globe, that comes to the second group. It's called Paranormal Road Trippers. And as you might have already guessed, it has a specific focus. It's to help paranormal teams from across the world to connect if they're planning to do investigations in other countries, it helps them to connect with possible teams in that country so they can figure out what sites there are to investigate, how to get to them, local law, everything in between. It is to help us connect and get more efficient at going across the world and it's just another way for us teams to unite and get that all-important evidence that we're all looking for. 
That one stands at 136 followers, but I think we can do better. So let's really like and share these pages and get as many people as we can joining them and let's come together. Now, on to some really, really quite excellent news. Now, yesterday, if you missed it, m and Paranormal was invited once again by Keep It Real Spiritual and Paranormal Events to host a short clip of our three most memorable moments on Investigations Past to go on Spiritual Productions TV by Bob and Sally Ann Hunt. It was a real pleasure to work with them again and send a clip into them, but if you missed it, here it is. Hi Sally Ann and Bob, it's Shell and Chris here from Morrison Anderson Paranormal. We're here to tell you about our three most memorable moments of investigations past. So Chris is going to share with you the first one. Now the first one goes back to the Bridge North Tunnel when we revisited it with Brian and Nathan from the Paranormal Detectives. We heard a noise which sounded like a piece of equipment so I went off on my own to check it out and see if one of the cameras was malfunctioning only to find that it was okay. And when I radioed back in I told the lads and they replied saying they heard a female voice talking alongside me. Now when I went back I told them that I'd been running a phone app um, and let them listen to the voices coming out of it and they said no it was not a phone voice it was a female fluent voice that was speaking along with you yeah i was with uh, brian and nathan the detectives at the time and it it was nothing like that had come through the phone it was a female voice we couldn't make out what she was saying um it was very quick um but it was definitely it, almost as if a woman was stood next to him um I can't remember if we caught it on camera. I know the detectives definitely did and it's in their episode. So if you get a chance, check that one out. Um, to our second most memorable moment, mm. we visited the ancient Ramin back last year with the paranormal detectives again and uh, paranormal blogger Chloe. Uh, we did a fear experiment at first, which in itself was an amazing moment. But... Um, at the end of the night we wanted to do something a little bit special so we decided to wait until 3am and do a Ouija board session in the barn which for us had been the most active um, area of the building for the entire investigation. Um, we got a lot of activity in there, a lot of noises, a lot of um, sounds and the Ouija board session itself was just amazing. We and scary at the same time we got a lot of activity on it a lot of words spelled out it wasn't very nice some of the things that were being said um the rem pod was going off the entire time on and off um as it start as the planchette would start moving the rem pod would go off at the same time um it was a really good experience really memorable definitely one that sticks with me so if you haven't seen that check it out on uh I think it's episode three of the three part special of the Ancient Ram on our YouTube. And Chris, the final one. And now the final one takes place at Acton Burnell Castle. Um, we went there for a night investigation and during the investigation we were doing Q&A with the DVR. Um, during which a ghost or whatever seemed to touch Shell's face um, and she immediately like shouted out to us like something's just touched me and they asked over the DVR who's just touched Shell to which a response came when I played it back very confident very strong me yeah and that was the first time I'd ever been actually physically touched by a spirit Creepy. so yeah that was definitely a moment that stands out so that's ours thanks for yeah. including us in this um, we hope to see you soon. Hopefully lockdown will be over. Yeah. Um, Sally and Bob, we hope you're keeping well, uh, looking after yourselves. And uh, see you soon, guys. See Bye -bye. you soon. Stay safe, guys. Really, really enjoyed thinking about this. And 
figuring out what our favourite moment was on each sort of investigation we chose. I do have a few more moments that I like, but I'll talk about them another day. But uh, yes, that was a really good thing for us. We really like Bob and Sally Ann, and it was a pleasure to do this once again. But our best news of the night is owner of Awesome Source and a personal friend of ours, Fran Norris, is actually joining the m and team. Now, if you don't know, we did an investigation for her at her tattoo shop um, not too long ago. And since then, she has decided to join up with us, bringing a more spiritual side to our investigations in the future. She'll also be hosting a slot on m and TV on a regular basis, bringing you all sorts of info and advice, maybe some other stuff. So if you have any questions for Fran, do post them in to Morrison and Anson Paranormal Facebook page and we can forward them onto her. But just as a last note, Fran actually has her own group as well. It's called Fran's Spiritual Guidance. So do check it out, do like it and follow it and let's get our numbers up through the roof and start supporting her. She's a wonderful lady and it is a pleasure to welcome her to m and Paranormal. But that's all I have time for today. Thank you for watching the news. So that was your weekly news update, guys. As Chris said, we are absolutely thrilled to have Fran on board. Now let's have a sneak peek at what's coming up later in the show. Shell talks with paranormal investigator turned author Russell Philip Masters. Chris interviews Bob on his first paranormal encounter. And we'll be taking a look back at some old footage recorded at Drayton Tunnels that's never been seen on YouTube. First, here's Fran in her very first video for the team in our brand new segment, Spiritual World, which features the spiritual side of the paranormal. My name is Fran Norris and I'm here to talk to you today about witchcraft. I've been a white witch um, from about the age of 17, which is when I discovered um, paganism. Um, and I will just talk to you briefly about what it means to be a pagan and what it means to be a white witch. Um, pagans, we have um, a very strong belief in mother nature and that there are many gods and goddesses we're strong believers in equality so we believe for every god there has to be a goddess um so not every pagan is wiccan and not every wiccan is a pagan but they do tend to go hand in hand personally i am um a pagan and a wiccan and Wiccan is just a wide term used for um, people that do use witchcraft. Um, witchcraft isn't uh, anything like it's portrayed in books, films and any sort of fantasy based stories. It's actually um, to do with positive energies usually um, and the energies of objects and people and it's about manipulating those energies for positive outcomes in the case of a white witch we do a lot of healing um, and we tend to be kitchen witches as well a lot of us where we know um, about the healing properties of different herbs um, and tend to use them in uh, cookery or making people her pouches to either carry around with them or place under a pillow to relieve certain ailments. Um, we in no way say that you know witchcraft is to be relied on a hundred percent. It is something that is a complementary um, medicine and should be used alongside traditional 
uh, means. So, um, yeah, it's, it's all about positivity, really, and kind of using positive thoughts to try and uh, create positive outcomes. And um, which I think is a really sort of lovely way to go about uh, about life. Um, so if anyone does have any questions about what it's what it is to be a white witch what it's like to be a white witch you know sort of anything just get in touch with either myself or the team at uh, Morris and Anderson Paranormal and I'm sure they'll pass any questions that people have on to me um so I'm trying to think what else I need to sort of tell you about myself as a white witch the other uh, big part of being sort of a white witch is we do tend to be quite spiritual people as well um, and we tend to be able to do things like commune with spirits when you know, when we kind of open up to it um, and be able to sort of sense things um, that maybe um, other people can't. Um, personally I'm also an empath so I tend to pick up on other people's emotions uh, before they've needed to kind of really tell me how they're feeling I'll, I'll sort of know when I'm in the room some, with someone if they're feeling anxious, nervous, um, upset um, I can usually tell if someone's grieving as well which is a, a strange um, a strange thing or even if they've gone through some form of heartbreak or, or breakup it can be very apparent to me even if I don't know the person and know what they're going through um, and also with with uh, being a white witch, I um, I can do sort of tarot readings, um, and a lot of people don't realise that actually tarot is um, something that it, you know is and was originally a pagan thing, um, along with palmistry. Um, sort of the, if you have ever had your palm read, that's a that's a pagan tradition. Um, and there's also, you know, there's a lot of things that people do in crystal healing and all that kind of thing. It, it's actually pagan um, and it goes back to sort of runes and um, things like that. And paganism, it is very closely linked to Viking um, beliefs and their history um, is where kind of paganism really sort of originates. And there are a lot of um, traditions that are about in the world today that were originally um, a pagan thing. And it's probably a great time to actually <laughs> talk about one of those that, I mean, currently um, it's Easter, and um, which is a Christian um, celebration. But it actually has a lot of its symbology and uh, the time of year in which it's held and other things um, actually coincide with um, pagan uh, festivals and um, it's actually kind of our sort of fertility <laughs> festival um, and a lot of the symbols like the egg um, it's actually that's to do with fertility not the um, not necessarily the uh, resurrection of, of Christ and everlasting life. Um, but I'm not going to put down Christianity because as a, um, a pagan um, and all pagans, we believe that there is no one set true uh, religion. We believe that everyone has their own truth and that, you know, no one is wrong to follow any particular uh, religion or belief because they're all right in their own way. And the way we kind of look at it is if you had um, a huge organisation that was like a multi-million uh, pound organisation, there wouldn't be one boss running the company. You would have uh, lots of different bosses running different departments. And that's kind of the way um, pagans see um, gods, goddesses and deities is that they are kind of all playing a role so it's it's rather we're rather inclusive of everyone's um belief systems um and you know that's probably something that goes hand in hand very much with the spiritual side of things as well 
so I hope I haven't bored anyone too much and like I said if anyone does have any more questions I will gladly answer any um, that occur um, and uh, I hope uh, I hope you have a lovely uh, uh, a lovely Easter celebration in whatever form that you celebrate uh, this weekend and I also you know hope that everyone is uh, starting to feel a bit more uh, hopeful as we're getting probably to sort of the peak of the uh, lockdown that's currently going on worldwide with the pandemic um, but I will just say love and light which is a traditional way of uh, saying goodbye to people as a pagan okay goodbye well done Fran for a first ever video for the team I personally thought it was very interesting and look forward to learning more about Wicca and paganism as we work together next up is paranormal chat with Shell And welcome to Paranormal Chat. Now, you may remember that in the very first episode of MA TV, we spoke to John Jeffries of ESN Paranormal about his first ever paranormal encounter. Well, this week I am joined by another member of ESN, a co founder, Russell. Now, Russell has written a couple of books, one which is entitled So You Want to Be a Paranormal Investigator. And a follow-up book to that, which is called So Now You Are a Paranormal Investigator. He's also written a few other books, but today we're going to talk about uh, those two books in particular and find out a little bit more about what inspired him to write. So first of all, Russell, thank you very much for joining me. Um, would you like to just tell us a brief bit about your books and what they're all about. Hi, yeah, yeah, thanks for having me on. Um, so, the first book, um, So You Want to Be a Paranormal Investigator, um, it kind of covers stuff that you wouldn't have thought about as an investigator, you know. As a paranormal investigator, I've been doing this years now, um, but others are so reliant on modern technology and stuff, but they don't get the same results as what our ancestors got. You know, our ancestors use them for advice, um, for advice on wars, um, the outcome of wars, you know, stuff like that. Um, and although I don't kind of encourage that, that kind of thing, you know, um, it goes to prove that this has been going, this has been happening for years. So modern technology just isn't good enough to keep up with it. And some things have come out of it, like, um, the EVPs and stuff like that, you know, you wouldn't have had them back in the day. You would have just had to write it down. Um, so you have had no proof that way. Um, but yeah, the best detective you've got is yourself. Um, so the first one kind of goes into what our ancestors would have used to communicate with spirit and to protect themselves from spirit. Um, and the second book, so now you're a paranormal investigator. Again, I missed out some bits in the first one, um, but it had already gone off the publishers, so I realised I should have put them in there. Um, so I self-published that to get it out quicker, um, so they could complement each other. So Russell, what inspired you to put pen to paper and actually write these books? So what encouraged me to put pen to paper? <laughs> um, well, it was my niece's third birthday party, and I'd started writing this stuff down anyway. Um, like research of my ancestors. My ancestry is really important to me. Um, it's Roman Gypsy, so um, not a lot's known about the Roman Gypsies, um, but they've been communicating with spirit for centuries, you know. Um, and so I started looking at ways on how they do it. You know, my mum still reads a tea leaf, she still reads a crystal ball. Um, and so I wrote it down. And the idea of the books, they were never going to be published, they were just going to go to um, new members starting the group so they knew what to bring to investigations so they were safe on investigations um, you know that was that was my plan um, but like I said my niece's third birthday party I went and I'd failed university in my third year um, 
I was diagnosed with dyslexia, dyspraxia and dyscalculus. Um, and at my niece's third birthday, family and friends were going, <laughs> you're still writing your book, Russ, are you? <laughs> and like, started taking the mick out of me. Um, so I went home that night um, and sent it off to a publisher. Um, and it got published and the rest is history, really. Um, the second book, like I said, was because I missed out some bits in the first one that I really wanted to put in there. Um, you know, I didn't have the comfort of a publisher and that because I had to get it out there quickly because I felt I'd missed bits and pieces um so my auntie um edited it for me in Cornwall um and yeah I uh, put it on Amazon self-published it um and it just complements the other book um you know I'm quite quite proud of the fact that you know I mean I was able to do that but in reality, the only reason it ever got published at all is because people took the mickey out of me and I, I don't like that. So, <laughs> that's it. Well, it's good to see that you're proving your doubters wrong and actually getting your books out there. Um, so, well done for that. That is awesome. Um, for anyone interested in getting a copy of your books, whereabouts can they find them? So the first book's um, available pretty much everywhere. Um, Waterstones, Amazon, eBay, um, oh, Argos. I think you can get it pretty much anywhere. Anywhere where they sell books, you'll be able to get the first one. Um, the second one, unfortunately, is only on Amazon at the moment. Um, but hopefully that will change in the future. But for now, um, yeah. The second one's Amazon. Um, and the other one, like I said, you can order anywhere. And finally... Um do you have any other plans for future books in the pipeline or is there anything else you'd like to share with us while we're here today so yeah i'm always thinking of new books and stuff to write um the next probably paranormal one's going to be the paranormal compendium um we've also got the demonology and parapsychology course um which is online at Coursecraft. Um, with that, you get a free limited edition book, um, but that will be stopping soon, the the books at least, um, and maybe replaced by the Paranormal Compendium. I don't know, because it's going to be a, a lot bigger book. Um, and it's going to cover parapsychology and demonology um, and other occulty type things. Um, other books and writing, um, got a fiction one in the works. I've also got... Um, two or three sort of psychological intervention books and stuff so yeah um i'm always kind of writing um and like i said you get into this it's not for the money really being an author um there's not a lot of money in it at all um unless you're a jk rowling or whatever so um but i keep doing it because i enjoy it so and you know if you've got ideas and stuff and you want to get them out there it's the best way to do it well, Russell, thanks for joining me today. It's been awesome to speak to you about your books. Uh, we wish you all the best in any future plans, and we look forward to seeing more of you on ESN. Um, for anyone who wants to check out ESN, they're on Facebook. Um, so, again, thanks, Russell. Uh, we will see you hopefully very soon. Bye-bye. Um, thanks. Um, thanks for having me on. Um... And like I said, um, head across to Course Craft or like I said, if you if you want to order the books, um, Waterstones or Amazon. And that's it. Uh, thanks for having me on. See you later. Bye. the move once tonight. So can I ask you, Steve, if you're, if you're here? Cross the sticks for yes. Sticks. The rods. <laughs> this is some equipment we know there, and there. There's <laughs> both ways you go down there, isn't it? If you can make the rods cross again, like you did earlier. Yeah, I Okay, it's not Steve that we're talking to.
You want to straighten them back up for me, my friend? Bring them back together. It's gone all right, I'll just do 360 of it. Go on, stop trying, all the way around. Yeah, reset them. Okay, so the stuff this is not Steve. Is there another spirit in the room with us? Okay. Thank you. Straighten the back out, please. Separate them. Thank you. Okay, again, if you cross them for yes straight and separate them for no, are we talking to a male spirit? Yeah. Well, you, move, you can move them better, you can move them quicker than that. So we're speaking to a male spirit. Thank you for straightening them out again. Any questions, Chris? Is that one of you, is that one of you two, Barry and Daniel? I think they're going to do further apart. Well, perhaps this is the gentleman Stuart that Joe was talking to. Are you the man that died down here that was crushed? Quite quick. Oh yeah. Oh nice. I might have been a sad subject, my friend. You a bit uh, you a bit lost down there. Not really any movement. Don't understand if it was lost. Hmm. Yeah, I definitely understand if it was lost. There is no Oh. Mm. Do you want to show you the back out that for me, my friend? Just pop that rod back for me. Any idea what the name was of the guy? No, I just. I think it was Christopher or something. Oh. Yes, reset those sticks on the Was your name Christopher? Is that you? It's me, yeah. I'm just trying to do that. Come on, I hold this properly. Was your name Chris or Christopher? You can see those stick vibrating. You can see the rods like literally vibrating. Yeah, yeah. Can you straighten those rods back out for me, my friend? It was Halloween 1941. Can you confirm the date when you died, when the accident happened? Was that? Halloween 1941. 
very quick. Yes, uh, I was, he was involved in the pre-construction of the place when the roof came out. Yeah. I heard that there was uh, two other guys that were with you that were died, although it's never been named. Is that correct? Thank you. Are you happy here? Are you happy to be here? I don't know, I think they're starting to go. It's gone ice cold in here, hasn't it? Mm, it's gone really cold in here all of a sudden, yeah. It's over in that. So are you making it cold? In that corner over there? So are you making me stupidly bloody cold? So Drelo Tunnels is a location that the team are hoping to investigate in the future and it's big enough to team share. 
so without getting in each other's way. So if any teams are interested in getting together to hire at this location, please get in touch. Now that was the first and last time we used stars and rods during, the, during an investigation. If this is something you would like to like or well, like us to see or would like, like us to try more of, please let us know. Next up, Chris is talking to Bob in real paranormal encounters. Hello, and welcome back to Real Paranormal Encounters. This week, we've got a friend of ours, Bob Hunt, who's here to talk about his group and his first paranormal experience. Bob, so welcome to Real Paranormal Encounters. How are you doing today? Very well, thank you. How are you? Yeah, I'm all right. So you coping well? Yeah, 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 we're lucky. We've got a garden to go in and the sun's shining, so we're coping with this lockdown all right at the moment. It's barbecue, barbecue weather at the moment. Oh, yeah, it certainly is. <laughs> so, on to, today we're going to get you to talk about your, um, your group a little bit, and then you're going to tell us about your first paranormal experience. Okay. Well, the group that I have run with Sally Ann and my wife is called Keep It Real Spiritual and Paranormal Events. Um, we've been going for five years and we started just doing charity work, um, doing events and inviting guests and we built quite a good customer base. And, and on top of that, we were also doing mediumship demonstration work and yeah. also running development circles of spiritualism and things along that nature. All of it was trying to make a money for charity. We were supporting a local um, child bereavement charity down this way. Um, so we were doing one public event a month for five years, pretty much, really. So we've done quite a lot now. Uh, um, the reason we really started that we three problems with before were purely scientific. Uh, and Sally Ann is a medium. So while we were chatting, he was explaining to me that really we were only doing half of the paranormal investigation because we were only doing the science side and not the spirit side. So we decided to go out and do a couple on our own and just see how we got on. Um, it worked. It obviously worked well. We're married now. Um, and yeah, and it developed from there really. It was, it's been quite an experience for five years to go to different places and to see what we got come out of. And, and also now doing a lot of private investigations as well. So that's to help people in their houses that are having problems. Um, we have one not so long back, the child that would sleep because of the poltergeist activity and it was frightened to death. Um, when we went in, we took one of our team leaders who took all the equipment in with him to show the child like laser grids and cat balls and things like that to keep the little one entertained because he was only two or three. Um, in the meantime, we were talking to the mum and the grandmother who were still busy about what's going on and Sally connected and it turned out to be a, a family member who was trying to help overstepping the mark and actually frighten the kid instead. So, yeah. yeah, so once we'd explained to the mum and the grandmother and the spirit as well exactly what was going on, and you know, if he could be there to help but stay back so the little one isn't seeing him or the, what's going on, and everything worked perfectly. He slept perfectly well ever since. So, well, well, we will get to, I think we'll get to that stage ourselves at one point, hopefully. But, um, yeah. if I if I take you back to yeah. your very, very first paranormal experience, when was that? Well, um, my mum's house was always a bit creepy, my mum and dad, where we were brought up. My mum still lives there now. And you could hear people walking around. And we used to talk about it as kids. Mum and dad would always poop for it and go, and I, yeah, it's just imagination, as they did. Mm -hmm. um, but I was laying in bed and I must have been about seven and I was in bed because I was ill. 
So it's fairly early in the evening, seven o'clock, but dark. So it must have been sort of um, November. And in them days, my mum would put us in bed. We were radio playing. And Radio 1 used to finish at six o'clock in the evening. And then it would switch to Radio 2. So I'm listening to Radio 1 and thinking, oh, yeah, it's all right. Then it switches to Radio 2. And I'm laying there and I think this music is so old. And with that, a little old lady was hunched up. I always remember she had a little hunched back. Came through the door. Actually, the door was shut. Actually, walked through. But it wasn't like a solid object. It was a outline that I could see. Walk into the room. Walk around the room as if you're doing something. And then walk back out. And that was seven. <laughs> that sort of a bit freaky. But no point in telling me mum and dad. They would have told me I was stupid, which carried on. <laughs> um, <laughs> as my normal interest peaked, my mum become more anti. She was trying to knock it out of me if you like. Um, <laughs> turned out in the end, my dad was quite happy to talk about it at the end, as he was getting to the end of his life. Um, he actually admitted that he knew he was going to go and see his mum and dad. He passed over. He was just scared about getting there. So he had the background. Our mum, still to this day, just absolutely will have nothing to do with it. So, so, so that event would be a defi defining moment for you as you grew up from then on. Your interest in the paranormal came from mm -hmm. that. I think so. I think from living in the house and over the years, Hearing someone walk down the stairs, um, my dad was trying to say it's the house settling, but you would hear from the top set, each set coming down, creaking, and then the living room door would open. So you knew that there was things, it was different, it was odd. So it piqued an interest. And then I started buying um, magazines, um, just taking an interest in films that were coming up. There wasn't much in the way of paranormal on the TV in them days. Um, so that was that. So that got me interested. And to be honest, it sort of, I got married, had children, it died off a little bit because I was busy with that. And then Most Haunted come on. And the first series of Most Haunted, to me, was good because it, if they didn't catch anything, they didn't fake anything it just come up as nothing happened um so that picked my interest back up again then through football form i met someone in a ghost club and then handed it until I managed to get out and start doing investigations and then i've been doing it now organized probably 15 20 years so plenty of experience yeah yeah uh, do, do you still, does your mother still live in that house? Do you still go back to it? Yeah, yeah, I still go in. Um, I was a film of dad's energy in there now because obviously my dad lived two doors away when he was a child. Um, yeah. So he's only moved two doors away and then started off they were renting one room in the house with other people, well, like my dad's brother had a room as well. And then as people were moving out, the landlord actually gave the whole house to my dad, my mum, and I was born. So I was there my whole life. My dad was there from 20, so he lived there 50 odd years and more, you know. And, and yeah, we were in that house all the time. So I'm wow. all about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of family history in that one house, yeah. So do, do you have any. Um... Do you have any regrets with uh, with paranormal investigating places you haven't been, things you haven't done? Oh, so many places that you want to go to, isn't there? I mean, everyone has a list of what they want to do. Um, if any, if there was any regrets that I'm had more time to, do, to dedicate to it, you know, what I mean, I've had to work to pay the bills and everything else. If I could have done it full time and just immerse myself into it, I know I would have thought more. But I've been lucky. I've seen some bloody amazing things, to be fair. Um, you know, when we're sitting in the room now, where I am now, it's just myself and Sally, the doors are locked, and we're talking about spirit communication, and wouldn't it be great if you could just talk to the spirit and they could answer you? And we have a female voice from the kitchen go, can you hear me? And he's just like, 
well, you know, there's only two of you, so ain't no, you know it's not human. Then you just wonder where it will come from. And that same or another female voice then followed us to our cafe. We bought a psychic cafe for a while. Um, and we would be doing things in there. And that same voice was heard by six or seven different people with their own ears. It wasn't like you had to listen to a recording to hear it. You actually heard it in the air. And it was just like amazing stuff. Just amazing. We just had a spirit communication not long, not long back by radio, actually, um, in a hotel in Weymouth. And as soon as I put the radio on, the first thing that came out of it was, who are you? <laughs> it's not the floor. So we introduced ourselves, and the woman's voice said yes. And then the men, the man's voice came back and went, are you here to read my soul? So, yeah, there's just amazing things out there. You just have to keep battling. It'll come. Sometimes you get, in and get nothing, and you go like, I'm fed up with this now, and then someone will step in and pique your interest back up. Sounds like yeah. a pretty wild ride. Yeah, yeah, we've had a great time, mate. And I, I love it. I know Sally still loves it because she communicates with the spirit, and we just keep going. We'll just keep going. Yeah. Till one of us dies, and then we'll be on the other side of the week before. <laughs> You'll be talking to me then. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you for being on the show. It's been, it's been, a, pleasure. It's been a pleasure to have you, my friend. I can't wait to be out in the field, and we'll uh, we'll see about getting ourselves together and do some stuff. Do some stuff we, together. We really do have to do that. Um, something that we're actually looking to do more of: uh, work with other teams to see how other people work see if we can all share our experience because we all work differently. Yeah. Excellent. Until next time we meet, my friend, thank you for being on the show. Thank you. It's been my pleasure. Okay. Well, sadly, that's all we have time for tonight. But thanks to Bob Hunt for joining us on this episode of Real Paranormal Encounters. If you want to check out Bob and his wife Sally Ann's Facebook page and see what they do, we'll drop you a link in the description below. I do recommend you check them out. They are wonderful people and I love what they do. But for me, good night. Well, that's all we have time for today. But before we go, we'd just like to congratulate the five winners of our drawing contest. Joffrey Watson, one with his uh, picture of Wasted. Um, in the adults category. Thomas, uh, Thomas Lowe uh, in the uh, 11 to 17s, Lola in the 6 to 10s and finally it was so hard to choose between um, these two um, under fives uh, so we decided to let two prizes go. So to Miller and Evie in the under fives, congratulations and again Thank you all for entering and congratulations. Yeah, we've hoped you've enjoyed this week's episode of MA TV. We'll be back next Tuesday at the same time, 7 o'clock. Until then, as I always say, stay safe, stay at home, and please stay at home. Don't go out in the nice weather. So tempting to. I mean, I'm out and I'm walking the dog. Let's see. Always taken for a walk and get out to do stuff like this so we'll see you again next week stay safe this is an important announcement it's not really it's just Watson and Lusted extraterrestrial um, you guys might have um, realized lately that I entered the Morris and Anderson drawing competition and because all the other ones was rubbish, I won. So, at the garage today, they've left me this. Look, Joff, well done. Love Team m and P.S. Bet Wasted, blah, 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 boring. Not going to even read it out. Anyhow, we're going to go into here. Just want to see what these guys have left me. This is nice. It's a bottle of beer. Saddlers. So that's good. They give me a bottle of beer. Have that later with my other bottles of beer. Um, Harry Bows. 
some more Haribos. I think I've got some of the kids' prizes there. Oh, they got one of these. Do you remember these from olden days? You put them down, and then... Oh, there we go. Brilliant. And, look at that. Morris and Anderson, Paranormal Investigators, fridge magnet. So, Reese, you need to get onto that, because we need a, a, a bigger fridge magnet with this on it. That'll be good. So, anyhow, thanks guys, um, hope to catch up with you in the future maybe and do some investigations and everybody out there stay safe and keep your distance from people and isolate and do things like that. So, this is wishing everybody the best in this crisis at the moment. This is Watson and Lustard, Extraterrestrial, signing out. Joffrey, tea's ready. Oh, that's perfect timing. Is it alphabetic spaghetti? Of course. Brilliant. <laughs>